بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Today we have the uh, Where's the mic? Oh the mic is here Today we have the ninth assembly of Sharh al tahawiyya we try to make it, inshallah, st we take advantage of every minute in it, inshallah, for the benefit of you brothers. Uh, the first notice about what uh, we've been given last week, or last two days, about does Allah force us to do good and evil? Or He had given us the choice. Does Allah force His people? The answer is given by Allah Himself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Do you compulse people until they become believers? Do you force them to be believers? As if Allah is telling His Messenger وسلم, that even you, you cannot force anyone to be a believer. إِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ there's a great benefit from this ayah. It means, if it was Allah's will, He would have forced them to be guided. To be guided. That means the forcing here. If there's a kind of forcing by God, the forcing will be for guidance. I repeat, if it was Allah's will, He would have forced them to be guided. So how will you be forcing them, O Muhammad? If it was Allah's will to force them, then He'll be forcing them to guidance, not to misguidance. In other words, compulsion will be on good, not evil. So how great is Allah? Another ayah to support what I was saying, Allah quoted in Surah Al-An'am, verse 148. The pagans will be saying to you, if Allah had willed, we would have not associated anything that means with Allah. So as if they're saying, it was Allah who willed it for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, say, قُلْ فَلِلَّهِ الْحُجَّةُ الْبَالِغَةِ فَلَوْ شَاءَ لَهَدَاكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Say, with Allah is the far-reaching argument, conclusive. If he had willed, he would have guided you all. This is the strongest argument. That if Allah wants to compulse you, he will be compulsing you on tawheed and guidance. Not on shirk and misguidance. This is so beautiful. So beautiful. I love it. So those who say, did Allah force us to do, to do the evil? It is Allah's compulsion on us. No. If Allah wants to compulse someone, He'll be compulsing them on, do, on doing the good, not to do the evil. What is incumbent upon you is that you convey. Laysa alayka hudahum. It is not on you the matter of guiding them. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ But it's Allah who guides whom He will. And we made it so clear yesterday, uh, two days before. It is true that Allah said, You cannot will, but unless Allah wills. This is true. But among the things that Allah willed is this. وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ We have granted Him the the way of choosing between the two things. We gave him the, the two ways. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And say, this is the truth from your Lord. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ huh? فَلْيَكْفُرْ And we mentioned that this ayah, it doesn't mean that Allah gave you the option and you're free to do whatever you want. Some people they 
They make it that way. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning. And the evidence about that is to continue the ayah. إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا We have prepared for the wrongdoers hellfire. So that means the previous verse is a matter of intimidation and the notice and warning. So it has two benefits. Number one, that Allah gave us the free will to choose. Number two, as if he's saying, yes, you do have the free will, but you got to be careful. There is a punishment at the day of judgment. In other words, if there's punishment, how can we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced us and then he's going to punish us? Those who say something like this, in a matter of fact, they're attributing to Allah zulm, wrongdoing. As if they're saying Allah is zalim. He forced us to do the evil, then he punished us for doing the evil. It can't be. Also, we want to uh, recite some verses as an explanation of the saying of Tahawi in which we ended with last, last week or last session. وَهُوَ الْمَبْعُوثُ إِلَىٰ عَامَّةِ الْجِنِّ وَكَافَّةِ الْوَرَىٰ He والسلام, was sent for all kinds of jinn. So jinn, they are tested people like us. They're tested. Whether they do the good and the bad. What we know about uh, the, the, the shayateen, the jinn, that they are scary, creepy. Right? Now we want you to listen to their beautiful words. Beautiful words for the jinn which Allah quoted. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِلَى طَرِيقٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ يَا قَوْمَنَا أَجِيبُوا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ وَآمِنُوا بِهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ وَيُجِرْكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ وَمَنْ لَا يُجِبْ دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ فَلَيْسَ بِمُعْجِزٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ أُولَئِكَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ These are words that Allah quoted the jinn saying them. What did they say? What is the translation? And mention of Muhammad when we directed to you a few of the jinn the Prophet had a meeting with them. <coughs> the Prophet was absent for a period of time and the Sahaba were so much afraid about him, they couldn't find him. Then suddenly he appeared to them and he said to them, I had a meeting with a delegation of the jinn from the tribe called Nasibin. Nasibin, tribe of the jinn. Ni'm al wafd How delightful and great are those delegations. Are you going to call them friendly ghosts? <laughs> they are jinn and mu'min. I want you to listen to their words now. So, we have directed the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to have a meeting with few numbers of jinn. And they were listening to the Qur'an. And when they listened to it, this, the moment they start to attend it, they said to, to one another, Ansitu! Ansitu! That's the first thing they did. Be quiet. We want to listen to the Qur'an. And when it was concluded, they went back to their people as warners. 
Now the jinn are conveying this Quran to their own people. Ya qawmana, inna sami'na kitaban unzila min ba'di Musa. Oh, our people, indeed we have heard a recited book revealed after Musa, confirming what was before it, which guides to the truth and to a straight path. Oh, our people, respond to the caller of Allah, that means Muhammad, and believe in him, that means believe in Allah. He will then forgive you your sins and protect you from a painful punishment. That's so beautiful. Then, furthermore, it continues. But he who does not respond to the caller of Allah will not cause failure to him upon earth. And he will not have besides him any protectors. Those are in manifest error. Did you like that? Mm. It's so beautiful. Then they said, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَلَمْ يَعْيَ بِخَلْقِهِنَّ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُحْيِيَ الْمَوْتَ بَلَىٰ إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Don't they see that Allah who created the heavens and the earth and did not fail in their creation? He did not get tired in their creation, is able to give life to the dead. Yes, indeed, he is over all things competent. وَيَوْمَ يُعْرَضُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَلَى النَّارِ أَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِالْحَقِّ قَالُوا بَلَى وَرَبِّنَا قَالَ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ and the, day, and, and the day those who disbelieve will be exposed to the fire and it will be said to them, isn't this the truth? That means which you were denying before. They will say, truly yes, by Lord, by our Lord. Then it will be said to them, then taste the punishment because you used to disbelieve. I wanted to recite those ayat. Also, there's a special surah for the for the jinn. It's called Surah Al Jinn, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says there, "Qul uhiya ilayya anna hustama anafar min al jinn, faqalu inna sami'na Quran an ajaba, yahdi ila rushdi fa amanna bih, wala nushrik bi Rabbina ahda." Say. It was revealed to me that some group of jinn, they listened to the Qur'an. Then they said, we have heard an amazing Qur'an. It guides to righteousness and rectitude. So we believed in it. And we will never set up partners in our worship with Allah. These are our brothers of the jinn. But don't try to have a contact with them. Because, you know, people are deceived. How many, how many soothsayers, how many magicians, they say, no, 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 we know some jinn, they are very friendly. They don't harm people. They're very, those are the deceived people. Because there is ahad, a pledge, that those types of creatures had been given and it is masiyah for them that they seek to scare the, the mankind believers. They shouldn't. It's masiyah. And this covenant was taken to them by Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. They shouldn't be doing this. In this life, they can see us, we, don't, we can't see them. In the other life, as Ibn Taymiyyah said, and I don't have any authority, other than that, I hope it's, it's correct, that they will, we will be seeing them, but they won't be seeing us at the Day of Judgment. Wallahu a'lam. 
So these are my comments about the last week. Let's get back to an important topic today. Beginning with what at tahawi said, وَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ And that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. I can, I can feel that the sound is a bit weak. I don't know if, if I'm correct. Okay. And that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. This is the doctrine of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, and I think you know it, that Allah had spoken truly. And the speech of Allah is under His mashi'atihi wa iradatihi. His speech is under His will. If He wills, He speaks. If He wills, He doesn't. And that the speech follows, the speech is sifa. The speech is sifa. Do you speak, brother? So, you are a speaker. That's your sifa. Otherwise, if you can't speak, we call you dumb. That means you can't speak. So we say, As-sifa tabi'atun lil masuf. Sifa description. It follows the one who's, what? It's a description that follows the one who deserves this. Huh? No, it's an attribute that follows the one who is attributed. So Allah is attributed as being a God that speaks. So the speech is a sifa, is an attribute that follows him. As sifa tu tabi'atun lil masuf. If we say that, that means this sifa attribute should not be created. Because how can we believe that all the attributes of Allah are not created except His speech is created? And His speech is sifa. How can we believe that it is sifa of Allah but it is created? This was the problem of those Jahmi, Mu'tazili people who said it that way. They said that. Now, speaking to Allah or being spoken by Allah, who's that? Who heard the speech of Allah among mankind? Anyone else? If you don't remember, I don't remember. I myself don't remember anyone other than Musa a.s. Nah? I don't remember that Allah spoke to him directly. If he spoke to him in Jannah, the matter of Jannah is different. The nature of people in Jannah is different. That's why at the day of judgment, when we, when we enter Jannah, inshallah, okay, we'll be able to see Allah. Why no one can see Allah and live in this life. No one. Even when Allah appeared himself to the mountain, for maybe a period of less than a second, the mountain was crushed and turned to what? Dust. So we don't have the ability now. So don't talk about Adam when he was in Jannah, that's another issue. We're talking about life. Who had heard the speech of Allah in life? That was Musa only. No one else. That's what distinguished Musa from all other prophets even. That's his significance. That they call him Kalimullah. The one who had spoken to Allah and Allah spoke to him. So that's our doctrine. What about the Asha'ira? I want to understand what is, what is Asha'ira. Do you know who are, who are the Asha'ira? Let's give uh, mention, uh, breathe these cults orderly. First, Jahmiya, the followers of Jahm, who denied Allah's attributes, and he considered every attribute of Allah is God itself. So, if Allah has frequent attributes, that means frequent gods, and that's why he denied Allah's attributes. After him, Al-Mu'tazila, 
Mu'tazila, they were significant in denying that Allah can be seen. And they followed Jahm ibn Safwan. Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari was 40 years with them. Then suddenly he decided to leave them. And he freed himself from them. And he declared tawbah. And when he declared tawbah, he said, My way of doctrine, my ideology is the way and the method of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He is the Imam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported the sunnah, the deen by him. So when Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari repented from the Mu'tazila way, the deviant way of Mu'tazila, he was with them for 40 years, then suddenly he decided to be a follower. He never thought to be followed. Follower of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. But now, it's different. Those who call themselves Ash'aris, they're supposed to be also Hanbalis. Because the, 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 the one that they carry his name, he did not follow the way of Mu'tazila and Jahmi anymore. Finish. His way is the way of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Why do they oppose him while they take his name? It's a problem. But what should we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be judging between his servants at the day of judgment. So, but the problem is that they said, those Ash'aris, now the Ash'aris are in a, in a status between us and Mu'tazila. Yani they, they are closer to us than Mu'tazila. Yes, that's true. But they contradicted themselves in many ways. Why? Because they did not take one way for them. Sometimes they use the Sunni way when they fight the Mu'tazila. And sometimes they use the way of Mu'tazila when they dispute with us. I don't want to mention the word fight. You may think that. Yeah, arguing, disputing. Okay? Now, what do, the, what do those people believe? This is very important because those Ash'aris come and say to us, we are Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Well, number one, you follow Al Mul Kalam, theological rhetoric, and we have rich archive and documents narrated by, uh, narrated to Shafi'i, Ahmad, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Ishaq al Thawri. Abdullah ibn Ubar, many, 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 many scholars who dispraised the al Kalam, theological rhetoric, and warned people from. Even a Shafi'i said, my fatwa about those who follow al Kalam, that they should be hit by the leaves of the palm tree. That's their punishment. And they should be set on a, you know, seated on a donkey. And they will be uh, they will be driven while they're on the donkey, and make a declaration to people that this man is misguided, because those who follow this Al Kalam, they are misguided people. So you, there's no way to say to us, we are Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Leave Al Kalam first, theological rhetoric, and then tell me that you belong to Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Leave it first. Because the leaders of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, Shafi'i, Ahmad, Malik, Abu Hanifa, those all people, they criticized Al Mul Kalam. And they blamed harshly those who follow it. So, what is their perspective regarding the Kalam of Allah? They believe that. The speech of Allah is speech in the soul. Soul speech. Soul speech. That means he speaks in himself. He speaks in himself. Ma'na. His words are meanings, not words. Tayyib. So how did we get this Quran? Uh, Jibreel. He understood those meanings in Allah and he converted them in uttered words okay do you have narration by Rasulullah that this what happened because this is a matter of unseen you cannot give details about the unseen with your ishtihad there is no ishtihad in matters of unseen 
So how did he know that? This is a problem. Bye. Let's first, before we discuss with them about that, let us prove where did they say that this speech of Allah is meanings in the soul. Before we judge them, we have to give the proof. Did they say it or not? Uh, As-Subki, in his book, Tabaqat al-Shafi'iyya, volume number 10, page 294, he said, Al-Kalamu al-Nafsi ikhtalaf al-Asha'iratu fi. The soul speech, I think you know what it, what it means now, soul speech. Yani yeah, speaking in your soul. So I'm going to use it, I don't, I don't want to explain it many times. Now you know it. The soul speech, can it be heard or not? Some of, th some of the Ash'ari said, yes, it can be heard. And some others said, no, it cannot be heard. So we have two benefits. Number one, that, that this is an Ash'ari scholar who admitted that there is something among the Ash'aris called soul speech. Second, that they differed between one another. And don't forget when they say the mind is preceded, then the book, then the sunnah. Now you have minds and you disagree with one another. Some of you said that the soul speech of Allah can be heard. Some others said the soul speech of Allah cannot be heard. So what, we, what should we be doing now? Should we bring cards? Making, uh, what do you call it? Qur'a. What's your Qur'a? Voting? Huh? Yeah, voting. Yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. Bye. So they said it. Al-Bayjuri. He has a book called Sharh Jawharat Al-Tawheed. Sharh Jawharat Al-Tawheed. Page 73. This book. It had been endorsed to be a material that should be touched in Al-Azhar until now. It's been used as an uh, object of studying the Aqidah, the doctrine, the ideology by Al-Azhar now. Until now, what did he say in that book? Sharh Jawharat Al-Tawheed. He said... Some of the Ash'ara believe that the uttered words of the Qur'an had been expressed by Jibreel, yani the expression of Jibreel. Yani we should be writing here on this Qur'an, this is the Jibreeli Qur'an. Jibreeli Qur why Jibreeli Qur'an? They said that Jibreel had expressed it and suggested the words that he uttered by his own authority. And he understood what's in the soul of Allah. How come? Well, we have Isa, who said to Allah, according to Surah Al-Ma'idah, تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ You know what is in my soul, but I don't know what is, your, what, what is in your soul. So how can some people claim that no, Isa, yes, he doesn't know. But uh, Jibreel can know. Can know what's in the soul of Allah and convert those meanings to letters and words. And he said, furthermore, he said, the Ash'aris have two sayings, two opinions about the speech of Allah, Al-Quran. Some of the Ash'aris said that the utterance is from Jibreel and some others some others they believe that the utterances the words are made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the speech of a messenger honorable messenger either it Look, either Allah meant by that Jibreel or Muhammad, this is uh, idafat 
تبليغ We call this the إضافة You know what I mean يعني he referred it This is reference of Conveying Or Jibreel This is reference of what? Descending Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his Quran نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ يعني this Quran is the Quran that Jibreel descended so the mission of Jibreel is to, to descend the Quran not to invent the Quran not to innovate the Quran but to descend it in another ayah قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ Say that Ruh Al-Qudus is the one that descended this Qur'an by truth. Descended, descended. Why didn't Allah say that Jibreel is the expressive, is the express, expressor of the Qur'an? Ahl sunnah they use many evidences to prove that the Qur'an is the words of Allah, that Allah uttered them. In the ayah, I think number six or seven, the first page of Surah At-Tawbah. وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكْ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهِ If one of the mushrikeen sought refuge with you, then offer him asylum. If any one of the Mushrikeen seeks you protection, then grant him protection, asylum, so that he may hear the words of Allah, kalamullah, then deliver him to his place of safety. So give him respite, give him chance, give him break until he hears the kalam of Allah. That's the evidence of Ahl Sunnah that the Quran is the words of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred his words to himself Kalam Allah So how can it be Kalam Jibreel? We have Al-Baqillani Al-Baqillani He was a strong Hardcore What do you call Hardcore Ash'ari Also he repented from this way of Ash'ari way. He repented But before he repented He wrote a book called Al-Insaf Moderation what did he say? He said, The example of the Quran, the word of Allah, the speech of Allah is as the one who does not utter the words by his tongue, nor he hears by a voice, but he let us understand his words by signaling his words to us. Signaling. So we understand him and he understands us. By signal? <laughs> you know the signaling words? Did you see the news when they put someone who make this? Did you see? He's saying that the words of Allah, the speech of Allah is like that. He's making Allah dumb. Al Insaf. Page 159. I read it by myself and I have the book. And I and I wrote what I saw in his book word for word. It's amazing. Oh sorry, I mean it's uh, hilarious. How can such person speak like that? Now those are the Asharis. What about the Matridis? Whom you call today Diobandis, right? Diobandis. They agreed with Mu'tazila in saying that Allah created speech in the tree which Musa alayhi salam heard. Congratulations. That means the tree said, Innani ana Allah, inni ana Rabbuk. The tree? Wallahi, this tree now should be worshipped. By the way, does Allah allow himself to speech 
through solid materials in animated solid objects knowingly that those solid objects will be worshipped. Look, the layman people, they are ready to worship anything. So if Allah allows the tree to say, I am your Lord, I am your God, O Musa, they'll be worshipping it. You know why? Because those idol worshippers, they used to be deceived by the jinn, the jinn used to be speaking, making noises and voices through these idols in order to let people have a belief, sort of a divinity belief in these idols. Will Allah be doing the same thing? Allah will be letting a solid object or material to say, I am Allah. This will be returning us to what? To the Jahiliya. Because there are many stories and fables about the statue of Isa had spoken. They hear some they hear some noises and speeches coming out from this idol to let people have a holy belief in those idols. Would Allah would Allah be doing the same thing? It's very strange. What is the difference between the Asha'ir I believe and the Matridi and Mu'tazil I believe? The Asha'ira agree with Mu'tazila but indirectly, <laughs> while the Matridis agreed with the Mu'tazilis directly. At the end, all will be agreeing, will be coming to the same belief. I don't know if I'll be having time to give you the details about that, but it's really amazing. It's a strange thing. What is the doubt that those people Yani, what, what is the doubt that caused those people to have this belief? First, the terminology. Do you remember that I said that those people are not supposed to be using Quranic words and, and agree between themselves specially to have a special different meaning? Yes. This is one of their problems. They heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنَ الرَّحْمَانِ There are two ayah. One, مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ Which begins with مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ مُحْدَثٍ إِلَّا اسْتَمَعُوهُ وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ In another ayah, which the ayah I recited tonight, as Salaf al-Isha, وَمَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنَ الرَّحْمَانِ مُحْدَثٍ their special understanding of the word muhdath, those Mu'tazila, Jahmiya, Asha'ira, muhdath means makhluq, created. So they say we have two ayahs as evidence that the Quran, the word of Allah, is created. What is the evidence? Look at that. In the Quran, there is no remembrance, that means revelation, that comes to them created, but they turn away from it. Or they hear it while they are jesting, playing. Let's explore the Quran verses. We have about five verses wherein we find the word muhdath, ahdatha. Yuhdithu. The first one is in Surah Al-Anbiya where Allah said and there is no remembrance a new from their Lord Muhdath a new Look here in the translation it did not say created I repeat no revelation comes to them a new from their Lord except that they listen to it while they are at play and no mention that means revelation comes to them a new from the most merciful, except that they turn away from it. That's in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, verse 4. The other one. وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا وَصَرَّفْنَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْوَعِيدِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ أَوْ يُحْدِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا and, that's, and thus we have sent, and thus we have sent it down 
as an Arabic Quran and have diversified therein the warning that perhaps they'll avoid sin or it would cause them remembrance. It will cause them remembrance. Yuhdithu lahum thikra. It didn't, the translation, it was not translated as created for them dhikra. No. The last one, Al-Khadr, he's the one that the Prophet Musa had met in order to seek some knowledge from him. He said, do not follow me. فَإِنِ اتَّبَعْتَنِي فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي عَنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى أُحْدِثَ لَكَ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا He said, Then, if you follow me, do not ask me about anything until I make to you about it. Make a mention. Now, make a mention. Is it talking about creating? Does Al-Khadr create? So if a person say, أُحْدِثْ أنا أحدثت does it mean I created? No. So the word ahdatha, yuhdithu, muhdithan is not a word that has been used for creating from nothing. Neither in the Quran nor in the language between people. The last ayah. لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا You do not know. Perhaps Allah will bring about after that a different matter. Bring out. He did not say create. Bring out. Five verses. None of them used. Uh, uh, Allah used the word muhdath within the meaning of creating. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He was talking about creating the heavens and the earth and all the universe and the trees and the stars and etc., 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 He was using the word khalaqa. Ja'ala. He did not say ahdatha. Why Allah, when He was talking about all the creation, the heavens and the earth, He never used the word ahdatha. But only when He talked about His Quran and about His decision, He made His Quran and His decision created. Isn't this amazing? That shows the dangerous and the, the, the opponent meaning that those people used for the, for the words that are mentioned in the Qur'an. They take Qur'anic words and they agree specially, exclusively between themselves, special meaning that people, the layman people do not know about. And this is how they deceived people and have had them understanding or thinking that the word muhdath means created. In the two ayah, we have the word muhdath, muhdath. And they said muhdath means makhluk. Which is not true. Because Allah did not use the word muhdath except for three times, I think. Huh? Those two ayah that I mentioned. Another ayah. Uh, لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا. You do not know, but Allah, you don't know that Allah may after that يحدث. Let's say create a matter by Himself. So the matter is created. That's the amr of Allah. How can the amr, the command of Allah, be makhluk? And also the way of Ahl Sunnah, the proof of Ahl Sunnah, they quote this ayah. Innama amruhu, that's the last ayah in Surah uh, Yaseen. Ida arada shay'an an yaqula lahu, kun. Kun is a word or not? What's the meaning of kun? Be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He creates by His word, kun, be. How can Allah create something by something created? Did you get the point? How? Type. So first we say, now we told you what they believe. Now we have to refute it. First, talking about al-kalamun nafsi, 
the soul speech is a matter of ghaib. And any matter of ghaib, we're not allowed to give any de details about it except what had been given to us from the authentic sunnah, and that's all, period. You're not supposed to be talking about alam al akhirah by your own opinion, ijtihad. So how did he know that Jibreel, he was able to know what Allah, the, the, the meanings that Allah have in his soul, then he converted them in uttered words. Where? Is that in Bukhari? Is that in Muslim? No. They have to justify the evil. Look what Allah said in Surah Al-A'raf. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وأن... I'll repeat it. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Gradually, one is over the other. And the worst thing is, is that you speak about Allah, something that you have no knowledge, without any kind of awareness. Say, my Lord has only forbidden immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed, and sin, and oppression without right, and that you associate with Allah that for which He has not sent down any authority and that you say about Allah that which you do not know this is a big sin this is a major sin that you speak about Allah something without knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another ayah إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ verily he only commands you to do the evil and acts of abomination وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Who's ordering you? Shaitan. He's ordering you to do evil, adultery, abomination, and he orders you to speak about Allah what you have no knowledge about. That's in Surah Al-Baqarah. When those mushrikeen were giving details about malaika, that they are the daughters of Allah, etc., etc., and they have a lot of fables and, and false stories about the angels being the daughters of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Am khalaqna al malaikata inathan wa hum shahidun. Or did we create the angels' daughters, females, while those people were witnessing? Same thing we say to the Ash'aris. Or did Jibreel took the meanings from Allah while you were witness? Did you witness that? Did you witness what you claim? How to rebuttal this false idea? We're coming to that now. And I want you to be attentive with me. There's Hadith Qudsi. Do you know the meaning of Hadith Qudsi? All of you? Hadith Qudsi? What's the meaning of Hadith Qudsi? Narrating what Allah says. The Prophet is narrating what Allah says. Is narrating what Allah says. And among what Allah said is this. I am of what my servant thinks about me. وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا هُوَ ذَكَرَنِي And I'm with him as long as he remembers me. فَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِيهِ Do you remember the hadith? إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي Oh, Shaykh Dimashqiyya. This proves that there is kalam nafsi for Allah. Did I deny it? I didn't. Now that's the point. When the word kalam is without nafsi, it should be taking the verbal kalam, always. Unless we have the word nafsi, yes. But if there's no nafsi, 
What comes to the mind immediately? The verbal, the, the verbal speech. The hadith confirms that. Look. فَإِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي If he remembered me in his soul, I will to remember him in my soul. وَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَأِ And if he remembered me in an assembly, ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَأٍ خَيْرٍ مِّن مَلَأِ Then I will remember him in an assembly better than his. Tell me, when you are in an assembly and you mention someone, do you mention him by your heart? You are in an assembly. Okay? And you're mentioning, you're remembering someone. Do you mention him by heart? If Allah will be mentioning someone by heart in the assembly, what, what, is, what is the significance? All people are remembered by Allah and His soul. Did you get the point? Yes. So we can grab the benefit from this hadith that there are two types of speech. One of them is in the soul. The other one is speaking to the angels. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَأٍ خَيْرٍ مِنْ مَلَأٍ That means I'll be remembering him, mentioning him in an assembly, and I'll be speaking about him in my assembly. And my assembly are better than the assembly that he remembered me with. Hadith is so clear. And the hadith mutafaq alayhi. Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari hadith, uh, um, I don't have the number of the hadith. I can bring it in a second for you if you need it. But I have the number in Muslim, 2675. Now, let me show you from the Quran that when Allah wants to, to mention the soul speech, He will be mentioning the word soul. When Allah was talking about the hypocrites, He said, وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ لَوْ لَا يُعَذِّبُنَ اللَّهُ بِمَا نَقُولُ The hypocrites were saying in their souls, hmm? Why didn't Allah punish us for what we've been saying? Hmm? Why? Why, Why didn't He? So Allah exposed them Okay? Declaring what they used to say in, the, in their souls. Why Allah did not punish us for what we've been saying? وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ So when Allah wanted to describe this soul speech, He will be adding with the word speech, word of what? Soul. Am I complica complicating the issue or it's clear? It's clear inshallah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, I hope so. This is in Surah Al-Mujadala, or Mujadila, uh, ayah number 8. So we can find here is, what do you call that? There is a confinement. You know the, you know the, the, the phrase or the word sometimes, it may be generalized, it may be limitized. We call mutlaq and muqayyad. How do you say mutlaq and muqayyad in English? Do you have any better expression than... What I say? Hmm? General yeah, general and specific. Specific that means it's confined. Something is confining the word. Okay? Like al kalam. Is it specific or general? General. Al kalam al nafsi is specific. And you're not allowed, you're not allowed to make something specific until you have something. That justify, that justify specifying this. I meant to say here that the speech is divided into uh, restricted. They said that the speech is divided into mutlaq and muqayyad. Restrained and unrestrained. Mutlaq is just speech. Muqayyad is restrained with the soul speech. And the restrained speech here means to say, I've spoken in myself. I speak in my soul. Okay? This is the restricted type of speech. You have to clarify it by saying, I speak in my soul. Otherwise, when you say, I speak, it should directly mean that you're speaking by utterance. Words that are heard by people. 
That's the difference between speech without restriction and soul speech which is restrained to the soul speaking. That's why scholars said لا تخصيص إلا بمخصص No one should be specifying anything without due specification that justify that specifying. The fact that the Prophet narrated that Allah said if my servant rem remembers me in his soul I'll remember him in my soul. But if he remembers me in an assembly and that goes immediately to the general speech to the, to the uttered type of speech and if he remembers me in an assembly I will remember him in an assembly better than his assembly when I come to the judge and I and my wife complains me and she says to the judge he said to me you are divorced you think the judge will be saying to, to me did you say it in your soul no where the mind of the judge go I verbalized it. Talk. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna Allah yuhdithu min amrihi ma ma sha." Allah initiates of His amr, command, what he, whatever He will. Wa inna mimma ahdatha, an la tatakallamu fi salah. And among the things that Allah initiated, that you should not be speaking in your prayer. So tell me, brother, if you spoke in your prayer, is your prayer valid? What if you spoke in your soul? Is the prayer valid? If you say yes, that means, subhanAllah, all our prayers are batil. Because there is no one but he falls in this. So that shows the difference between the special soul speech and the general speech. Time. That's why even ling linguistic people they said that the meaning of speech yadullu ala nutqin mufhim nutqin mufhim the speech means an utterance understood utterance that take place that has been uttered and it caused people to understand something. Nutqin Mufhim. That's in Majam Maqais al Lugha, fifth volume, page 131. Nam. In Amrihi Masha, no. Wa inna mimma ahdatha. من أمره أن لا تتكلم في الصلاة. That means this is a new decision that you should not be speaking to one another in your prayer. That's why today we don't speak to one another. طيب. Now look what I'm doing now. I'm saying something in my soul to my wife now. How many times? Five. What did I say? I was saying in my soul to my, to my wife, you are divorced, you are divorced, you are divorced, you are divorced, you are divorced. Did divorce take place? No. Why? Because, because this is a nafsi speech, soul speech. And soul speech does not cause any divorce to take place until the speech will be verbalized. So, the word kalima, when we use it, we mean by that lafaz utterance, wal ma'na, and the meaning. Not the meaning without, apart from the utterance, no. Whoever says that the word is the meaning without the lafaz utterance, <coughs> verbal, he is twisting the meaning of speech. He is twisting the meaning of speech. 
uh, At-Tufi, one of the scholars, he said, Al-Kalamu Mushtaqun Min Al-Kalam. You know that the word Kalam, it has something to do with injury? He says that Kalam, the speech, is derived from Kalam. Kalam means injury. Why it's been, why it's been used uh, Kalam? While Kalam means injury. Because it has effect in the hearing of the one who had been spoken to. You get it? Now we have something called sound effect. Sound effect. Imagine if that sound effect comes from the soul. They call it sound effect. Where did that effect come? From the speech. You've been speaking. And your speech has a sound. Proving something called soul speech, it does not affirm a speech to Allah. But it, in a matter of fact, huh, deny it. That's why we are allowed, if that's what we believe, then we should be calling the dumb speaker. Why? Because he speaks in his soul. Doesn't the dumb speak in his soul, yes or no? Huh? When he goes like that, oh, 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 he can't speak. Don't you know that in his soul he's speaking? Yes. So should we call him speaker? Why don't we call him speaker? If we have something called soul speech. So that means the dumb is not dumb. He's speaking. But it will be the worst against Allah. That if we say Allah's speech, speech is only in his soul, you're making Allah dumb. Just like, just like the dumb who speaks not by his tongue, but he speaks in his soul. And when the, Jew, when the, the people of Israel took for themselves a calf, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّخَذَ قَوْمُ مُوسَى مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ حُلِيِّهِمْ عِجْلًا جَسَدًا لَهُ خُوَارٍ أَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّهُ لَا يُكَلِّمُهُمْ وَلَا يَهْدِيهِمْ سَبِيلًا اتَّخَذُوهُ وَكَانُوا ظَالِمِينَ And the people of Musa made after his departure from their ornaments, they made a calf, you know, the golden calf. An image. Having allow, allowing sound. Allowing sound. Yani, huh? High sound, big sound. What did they do? They made a hole here in the nose of the calf. And when the wind passes by, it makes a big sound. And they say, God spoke. But why they have to do that? Because the calf, this, this golden calf doesn't speak. And they must hear any kind of effect from this idol to holify it. See, this, that's supposed to what I was saying before. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a solid, a solid object to speak, to say to Musa, I am your Lord, I am Allah. If people took this tree as an idol next day, the blame should be on who? On Allah. Oh Allah, we heard the, the, the tree saying, I am Allah. Why did you worship it? You enable, you enable the, 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 the tree to say, I am Allah. So why do you blame us, O oh Allah? Does this make a point or not? So look what Allah said. Didn't they see that it could neither speak to them nor guide them to a way? They took it, that means the calf, as worship. And they were wrongdoers. Do you like jokes? Do you like jokes? Ibn Asakir, he's, he was uh, among the early Ash'aris. 
so close to the time of Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari. He used to pass by al-Muwaffaq al-Maqdisi, he's a Hanbali scholar. He's the, I think, uh, he's the author of uh, al-Mughni. As he passes by him, Ibn Asakir, the Ash'ari scholar, he says to Al-Maqdisi, Salamu alaykum. Then Al-Maqdisi does not reply, Salam on him. Then he sent someone to ask him, Why you don't, uh, why don't give, give me back my, my Salam to me when I say Salam alaykum? Why don't you return it to me? Then Ibn, uh, Ibn Qudama, he was asked this question, he said, He believes in the soul speech, and I was replying his salam in my soul speech. Also the Prophet ﷺ said, إن الله تجاوز لأمة عما حدثت به أنفسها ما لم تكلم به. Allah had overpassed, forgiven what my soul, my, my, my nation speak in their soul, unless if they spoke it. تحديث النفس. The Prophet said. In, in the matter of tahdith and us speaking to your soul, there's no blame on you. But if you said something wrong verbally, then this is how you'll be blamed. If anything occurs in your mind, okay, bad words, etc., you're not blamed. Unless you utter them, unless you speak them. No. Is it, it is amazing when, I, when we say that Allah Tawa over his throne, they say to us, Bidatihi? By his person? They want to blame you, to discourage you from attributing to Allah that he made istiwa by himself. So they say to you, Huh? By his person? Personally? Then they say to you, if, if you said yes, bidatihi, they'll be blaming you. This is innovation, bid'ah. Why did you? Allah did not say in the Quran that He made istiwa by His that, by His person. Where did He get, where did he get the word bidatihi, by His person? It's not in the Quran. So we say to them, it's just like you're saying that Allah speaks by His soul. Where did He get, where did he get the idea soul from? Why did he add the word soul speech to Allah? Allah did not add to himself any kind of soul speech. As a conclusion. Oh, we mentioned to you, I think, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمَ What's the meaning of تَكْلِيمَ? In Arabic we say تَأْكِيدُ تَأْكِيدُ التأكيد بالمصدر يعني يعني there's a strongest and stronger and stronger emphasize emphasis regarding the speech of Allah that means Allah wanted to emphasize that he had spoke him directly truly وكلم الله موسى تكليما so as a result we we find out that the Ash'aris believe in the, in the speech of Allah that they're talking about alim and irada, not speech. Alim, knowledge of Allah and will of Allah. They're not talking about speech. But speech should be involved. Because at the day of judgment, we're told by Allah that He's going to be calling His servants. وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ at, at the day of judgment, in the future. Whereas this soul speech is always with Allah. There's nothing called future. There's nothing called future speech for Allah. 
as far as the speech is soul speech but Allah is saying he, he did not say وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ لَهُمْ if he said it it's also an evidence for us but he's saying وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ he'll be calling them just like saying for example I said to you brother someone is calling you you're not going to say to me is he calling me by his soul you're not going to say that so also in the Quran Allah says وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ At that day, he'll be calling them. So why do those people have to twist the meanings and complicate themselves? Why do they have to do that? Stubbornness. It does not take place except after this hearing. Is, this is the understanding. This is the reason. We'll, we'll come we'll what? Ask Allah subhanahu wa Next ta'ala. step to the hearing. To you heard and then you understand. But the Matridis and the Mu'tazira say, خَلَقَهُ ثُمَّ أَسْمَعَهُ مُوسَى He created his speech and then he put it in the tree to let Musa hear it. That does make sense. That's why one of the early scholars who are considered also, you know, the Sufis always quote his words. الحارث المحاسبي Have you heard of him? Anyone heard of him? الحارث المحاسبي he used to be just like Al Junaid, Abu Bakr Shibli, those uh, early people. He had some problem of Sufism. But he also said, If Takalam Allah Azza wa Jalla bihi takliman min nafsihi, min fawqi arshihi, min fawqi samawatihi. Uff. That's in his book, Fahmul Quran, page 302. And 309. What did he say? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spoken this Quran, speech, direct, direct speech, from himself, who is over his throne, over his heavens, skies. Then at Tahawi said, Min hu bada bila kaifiyya. Yani it, it began, the words of Allah, the speech of Allah began from him. He said, Bila kafiya. Bila kafiya, it may mean, that means there is no how. There's no how for it. Or there is a how, but we don't know how it looks like. There is a how, but we don't know how. There is a how, but, but we don't know how. So which one we take? Which one we take? There is a how that we don't know? How? Or there is no how? Because those people of Bid'ah, they say to you, Bila Kaif! Bila Kaif, they, they, understand, they understand to this Bila Kaif means that he has no how. But the necessary method of Ahl Sunnah that Allah has how. A God without how? How? A God without how? How? I can't believe it. So this was mentioned in his book, Fahmul Quran, page 302 and 309. He kept also, in, uh, I reached to the number 55, Minhu bada abira kafiyyatin qawlan wa anzalahu ala rasulihi wahyan. It began without how? Qawlan. You know what it means, Qawlan? That means verbally. He said it. Speech, in, in, in a verbal speech. Qawlan. Wa anzalahu ala rasulihi wahyan. And he descended it unto his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as revelation. Minhu bada'a bila kafiyatin. Qawlan. Wa anzalahu ala rasulihi wahyan. When he said qawlan, this is to rebuttal those who say that the words of Allah huh, are in the soul. Nafsi. Then how, then how at Tahawi said qawlan, Allah's, Allah had spoken to the, uh, to Musa qawlan, verbally, direct speech. Minhu bada'a, 
بلا كيفيه قول وانزل على رسول وحيا وي مينشن ذات هي سي وي دونت نو اباوت ذا سبيتش اوف الله نو وي نو از فور مي اي نو اي نو ذات ات از ويز ساوند ويتش بيبل اوف جنه ويل بي هيرينج ذات ساوند From the beginning of them until the end of them, they'll be hearing it the same at the day of judgment. وصدقه المؤمنون على ذلك حقا وأيقنوا أنه كلام الله تعالى بالحقيقة. Here there is an important point. إضافة المعاني إلى الله مثل الكلام. فإضافة المعاني إلى الله إضافة إضافة صفة إلى موصوف. Referring to Allah, the type among the things that we refer to Allah, we refer the meanings, such as the speech. So adding this attribute is an attribute that is attributed that follows the attributed one Allah. الصفة تتبع the attribute. Follows not what the attributed one. Okay, that's number one. Number two, idafa to ayan, reference of souls and persons, such as what I meant to say here. Uh, the reference of persons to Allah, such as saying the house of Allah, the camel of Allah. The spirit of Allah, that means Jibreel, all of those are followed to Allah as reference of honor. So it doesn't mean that Allah has a house for him that he lives in. No. But this is referring the house to Allah. It gives that house an honor and holiness. So that's why we call it the house of Allah. Also the camel. This is also a reference of honor. That the camel was something really great that Allah created. And Allah attributed to him so people should not be killing it or harming it. But the people of Salih, they did that. Despite the camel was called the camel of Allah, they killed it. بيت الله ناقة الله روح الله All of these are names that are attributed to the ناقة to the house to the spirit They are attributed as what? أعيان حقائق ليس بمخلوق ككلام البرية His speech is not similar, similarly, what? To the creation. Yes, for, for sure, we, we agree on that, there's no problem. فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ فَزَعْمَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever heard it and he said that this is the word of human beings, and it's not from Allah, he's kafir. But what about those Ash'aris who believe that the speech of Allah is kalam al-bashar? Some of them, some of them. They said, if you remember, they said that we disagreed among us, we Ash'aris. Okay? Is this the word of Muhammad or Jibreel? They said, some of us said that this Qur'an is the expression of Muhammad. Some other Ash'aris, they said, that no, it is the expression of Jibreel. The one who said that uh, it is uh, by its utterance, it is the Qur'an of Muhammad, those people will be similar to the one who said, إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرِ We shouldn't be saying that. This is blasphemy. وَقَدْ ذَمَّهُ اللَّهُ وَعَابَهُ وَأَوْعَدَهُ بِسَقَرُ يعني the one who spoke something like uh, like what? like the one who said that إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا 
قول البشر هي also الله said سأصليه سقر وما أدرك ما سقر there's a fear on those who say that the Quran is the either the Quran of Muhammad or the Quran of Jibreel those who believed it like that they'll be severely punished should we stop here that's enough for today what time is it now 8.30 okay let me just read the text فلما أوعد الله بسقر قال إن هذا إلا قول البشر علم علمنا وأيقنا أنه قول خالق البشر we had a certain now that this Quran is the book of Allah ومن وصف الله بمعنى من معاني البشر فقد كفر and whoever attributes to Allah any of the human meanings of attributes is what considered to be kafir but there's a problem here in what he said we understand that Allah has hands and now what we what we understand about the hands are those hands of us okay but he's saying if you attribute to Allah the attributes with the same meaning that you know about your own attributes or organs or etc you'll be severely blamed at the day of judgment by the way if this is the case why Allah doesn't tell me that you should not be doing that otherwise you'll go to hell otherwise you'll be blamed then why oh Allah you described yourself that by your fist you can grab mountains and etc uh, that you make istiwa, that you have two hands, that you have two eyes. Why did you describe yourself, O Allah, by that? Now, فَمَنْ أَبْصَرَ هَذَا اعْتَبَرْ Whoever, awakenly, he looked at this issue, اعتبر, he'll be taking a lesson. وعن مثل قول الكفار زجر، and he'll be pushed away from from what kuffar attributed or ascribed to Allah. وعلم أنه بصفاته ليس كالبشر، والرؤية حق لأهل الجنة بغير إحاطة ولا كيفية. And seeing Allah the day of judgment is a matter of truth. Is a matter of truth for the people of Jannah without comprehensively seeing Allah. We're going to discuss this issue next week, inshallah, in a very good way. Very good way. Today I was supposed to be making a debate with the, the Mufti of Oman. They gave me his telephone number to call him and to debate with him. I called three times. And they did not pick the line. And that's why I recorded it here. So I said to them, tonight I'm going to upload it for you. I've been calling it. You know why? I was going to ask him a simple question. I think I told you that. Because they believe that Allah should never be seen. Neither in this life nor in the hereafter. Sometimes I used to joke with them and say to them, Leave people see their God? Why do you prohibit them from seeing Allah? They want to see their Lord, ya akhi. Let them see the Lord. Is there any mu'min but he misses to see Allah? And his wish is to see Allah. But those people say no. So I was going to ask him simply, do you, hate, do you love to see Allah or do you hate to see Allah? If he said to me, I love to see Allah, خلص, he'll be in trouble. If he said no, that's, 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 his, that's for his foolishness. How come, uh, for shame, how can a person say no? And I was saying to his uh, disciples, didn't you miss to see Allah? Don't you have a zeal? Don't you have the enthusiasm to see Allah? Either he says no, and he'll be falling in kufr, or he'll be saying yes, then he'll be returning to the fitrah, natural disposition, and then he has to leave this cult. 
or he'll be punished on the day of the judgment. So we're coming to uh, Friday, discuss in a very beautiful way about the matter of seeing Allah on the day of the judgment. By the way, those Ibadi people, they neither nor. They are neither nor. Nor they believe that Allah can be seen, nor they believe that we can hear the words of Allah. Not only that we don't see him, but they believe that he does not see us. Because if he will see us, he needs, huh? He needs an eye, he needs etc. Et they bring, they have a list to discourage you. But where can they run from the mutawatir hadith of Rasulullah? Mutawatir that the servants of Allah will be seeing Allah the day of judgment. How can they run, escape that? They can't. Be with me next Friday, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Do you have any question? Sorry? You just type Dimashqiyya on the internet. Dimashqiyya. D-I-M-A-S-H-Q-I-A-H. Dimashqiyya. You'll find it, inshallah. Allah hafadkum. Barakallahu feekum. Yes, brother. I don't know any hadith that uh, says that. As in, like, you know the hadith Qudsi, it's narrated from the Prophet by Allah. Mm-hmm. Allah said, mm-hmm. Allah said that to him. That mm. Allah, mm. Is that like revelation? It's in general revelation. Don't specify what kind of revelation. Just leave it as it is. Okay? But nobody believed about his sunnah that the Prophet had been speaking to Allah directly, verbally. Uh, sorry, sorry, the, the, the other way. The Prophet used to be addressing Allah always. Okay? No, no, he was talking about hadith. I was talking about hadith al-Qudsi. And the hadith al-Qudsi is a story about the Prophet of Allah. No, he was talking about the Hey, hey, he, he's saying, Akhi, uh, that's what I understood. That the Prophet, when he narrated, when he said, Allah said this. Did, did Allah speak to him, giving this to him? Huh? Hey, look, see, Akhi. When it comes to the word, we will leave it on the basis. And we will not leave it on the لأن الله عز وجل قال وما كان لبشر أن يكلمه الله إلا وحيا أو من وراء حجاب أو يصير رسولا لم يذكر أحد منهم أن أن يكلموا مباشرة نعم لا وحيا أو من وراء حجاب أو أي نعم بس ما ذكر ما ذكر شيء كلام مباشر إلا في آية وكلم الله موسى تكليما هذه نعم طيب جزاك الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك